Freak the Mighty by Rodman Philbrick. Chapter 11. The Damsel of Distress. The address on the ID card is this place on the other side of the mill pond. They used to call it the New Tenements, but now everybody mostly calls it the New Testaments, which Graham told me has nothing to do with the Bible. People will make their jokes, she says. Call that place whatever you want, but you are not to set foot there. Is that clear, Maxwell, dear? It's not like I wanted to go into the Testaments, so it was real easy to keep that promise. And then the day after we pulled that soggy purse out of the sewer, Freak explains how it's okay to break a promise if you're on a quest. There may even be a reward involved, he says. The lady won't have much money if she lives in the Testaments, I say. Poor people live there, and dope fiends. What we do is go down to the playground and cut over behind that little patch of trees, just in case anybody is looking, and then we can circle around behind the pond. Freak is riding up top, which he almost always does now. That way he doesn't have to wear his leg brace or carry his crutches. And besides, I like how it feels to have a really smart brain on my shoulders, helping me think. Freak is talking a mile a minute. More stuff about the round table and how important quests are, and why knights are bound up with oaths, which is not the same thing as swearing. And I'm trying to listen and not ask questions, because if I ask questions, he'll pull out his dictionary. When we get to the Testaments, though, Freak shuts right up. It's this big, falling-apart place with a bunch of apartments, and it looks sad and smells like fish and sour milk. There are a lot of bikes and toys lying around, mostly bashed up and broken, and the little kids who live there look almost as busted up as the toys. When they see us coming, they make these screaming noises and run away, but you can tell they're not really scared. They just want to pretend like we're a monster or something. Eek, eek. Maybe we should reconsider this particular quest, Freak says. He's up there on my shoulders, and he's getting fidgety, squirming around. But we're already outside the apartment door, and I go, maybe she really needs that ID card. So it's my fault what happens next. The door opens before we even ring the bell, and this hand comes snaking out and reaches for the mailbox and finds this rolled up newspaper and pulls it back inside. And there's something about the blind way that hand moves that's creepy. Get me out of here, I'm thinking. Then, before I can get my feet moving fast enough to leave, this woman's voice is cussing us out. Iggy, she says. Iggy, come here and see this. Now she's standing in the doorway, this scrawny, yellow-haired woman with small, hard eyes and blurry red lips. She's wearing this ratty old bathrobe, and she's smoking the cigarette and squinting at us and making a face. Iggy, she says out of the side of her mouth. Come here and tell me, is the circus in town or what? Next thing, there's this big hairy dude in the doorway. He's got a huge beer gut and these giant arms all covered with blue tattoos. And he's got a beard that looks like it's made out of red barbed wire. Ain't the circus, he says, spitting a big gob on the step. This here is the carnival. Freak isn't saying anything, and I want to get out of here. So I go, sorry, wrong number and I'm trying to back away and not fall over a tricycle when the hairy dude comes out the door real quick and gets in my way. Not so fast, he says. Who sent you? I know the big one, the woman is saying. She's waving her cigarette around and squinting her eyes up, and you can tell she's thinking of something, worrying it like a dog with a bone. I've seen him around somewhere. Don't he look familiar, Iggy? Don't he? Freak finally says, Please, excuse us, we have the wrong address. We were, um, trying to locate a Miss Loretta Lee. The tattoo dude hears that, and he starts to laugh, this fat sound way down in his big belly. And he goes, You hear that, Loretta? This an old flame of yours, or what? Then he reaches up and pokes me in the chest hard enough to make me catch my breath. And he says, Cat got your tongue, kid? What is this, a Siamese twin act? All I can think to say is, oops, because we have the right address after all. The squinty woman in the robe is Loretta Lee, and even more important, Iggy is Iggy Lee, and I feel like a total butthead because I've heard of Iggy Lee. He's the boss of the Panheads, this bad news motorcycle gang. We found your purse, Freak blurts out, and he tosses down the purse, and Iggy Lee catches it with one hand, and he gives Loretta this secret look, 
like he's going to have some fun here. You better come inside, he says, looking up at Freak. You and Frankenstein. Sorry, Freak says, and his voice is chattery high. We'll have to decline your kind invitation, because we, um, we have to leave now. Loretta flicks her cigarette butt at my feet, and she says, Iggy says come inside, you better do it. So we go inside. I have to take Freak off my shoulder so we can get in the door, and that's when Loretta looks at me real hard, and she says, I know that one. It's like a flash from the past, Iggy. You know him? Iggy isn't paying any attention to her. He's pointing at this ratty chair, and he says, sit down. It makes me nervous looking up. Loretta comes around, and she says, Don't be making Iggy nervous. Not this early in the day. Last dude made him nervous. They had to shut up, Loretta, Iggy says in this real quiet voice. I'm thinking. You're right. He does look familiar. I'm sitting in this chair, which feels like it might bust apart, and Freak is right next to me, and I can see he's trying to stand straight, but it's not easy because he's all bent up inside. Names, Iggy says. Freak clears his throat and tries to make his voice sound deep and more grown up. We're sorry to disturb you, but we have to go home now. It's a matter of some urgency. Iggy reaches out and he flicks his fingers at Freak's nose. Whack! I can tell it hurts, but Freak doesn't say anything. He just tenses up. Iggy goes, I ask a question. You better answer. Get it? Names. I want your names. Freak tells him his name and then mine, and Iggy reaches down and pats him on the head. Very good, he says. Now that wasn't hard, was it? Next question. Where'd you get Loretta's purse? Freak tells him we found it in the storm drain. He doesn't mention us dressing up in all black, or the Darth Vader costume, or anything about knights or quests. Next question, Iggy says. Where's the money? Loretta coughs on her new cigarette, and says, But Iggy, there wasn't any money. And he goes, shut up, Loretta. And she coughs again and shuts up. And you can tell she's afraid of Iggy, the way she holds herself tight whenever he says anything. Freak goes, I've got two dollars in change. You can have it, but we have to go home now. Iggy gives him this look like he's thinking seriously about throwing up. And he says, what is it with you? You've got to go home? We're having a nice little talk here. Don't spoil it. All of a sudden, Loretta jumps up and she goes, Iggy, Iggy, I've got it. Kenny Kane! Remember Kenny Kane? For a second, I think he's going to hit her. And then he relaxes and really looks at me, and his eyes go wide, and he nods and says, Sure, that's it. Kenny Kane. You're right, he's a ringer for old Killer Kane. Must be his kid, huh? Sure it is. Loretta looks real happy that she finally figured it out, and she runs into the kitchen and kicks some stuff out of the way and pulls open the refrigerator we can hear her laughing and saying, I knew it, I just knew it. When she comes back in, she's got two cans of Bud, and she pops them both and gives one to Iggy. Breakfast of champions, she says. What a flash, huh? You remember that time old Kenny, shut up, Loretta, Iggy says. And then he chugs the Bud and squashes the can in his fist, and he drops it right on the floor, which is the first time I notice all the other crushed cans. They're everywhere. The whole place is like a trash can or a big ashtray or something. Meanwhile, Freak is giving me this look, like he has no idea what's going on, and that look scares me more than Iggy Lee and all his tattoos. I've got him, too, Loretta says, snapping her fingers. The midget or dwarf or whatever he is. He must be Gwen's kid. You remember Gwen? Stuck up Gwen? No, Iggy says, and his eyes are burning into me. Never heard of Gwen. Loretta goes, doesn't matter. What a flash this is. Kenny Kane. Time flies, huh, Ig? I can remember when these two were born. And then, what was it? A couple of years later, Kenny does his thing and he's in the yard, right? Doing time. Iggy says, That he is. I know a guy knows him inside. He gives me this creepy look. And he says, You go up there to visit the old man? You tell him Iggy says hello, okay? I doubt he even knows his father, Ig. He was only a little kid when it happened, right? I don't say anything, and Freak is looking at me like he's never seen me before. And then Iggy says, Killer Kane. What a tough hombre he was. Loretta says, I heard he's seen the light in there. He got religion. Is that true? I don't know. 
Iggy snorts and says, He don't know. You don't know much, do you? I shake my head. Loretta says, He's some kind of retard, Ig. He don't even know how big and strong he is, I'll bet. She pokes Iggy or tickles him, and in this strange giggly voice, she says, Why don't you find out? Find out if he's as strong as he looks. Iggy scowls and goes, Give me a break, Loretta. He gives me this long look, and then he hooks his thumb at the door and says, Showtime is over, boys. Get out of here, the both of you. Loretta says, But Iggy, we could have some fun. You're the retard, Loretta, Iggy says. What if Killer Kane hears I was messing with his kid? No, thank you. He's in for life, she says. What's the harm? Life ain't life. How many times I tell you that? Loretta is squinting at him, and she goes, Are you serious? He's getting out some day? And Iggy looks at me and tells her to shut up again. Finally, we get to the door, and that's when Loretta wants to rub Freak on the head, real hard, with her knuckles. This is for luck, she says to Iggy. It's good luck rubbing a dwarf on the head. Freak is trying to duck away, and he says, I'm not a dwarf, and I'm not good luck. So Loretta gives up on rubbing his head, and she stands up straight and folds her arms and says, Hey, midget man, I know all about you. Your old man was a magician. Did you know that? Freak is scuttling around behind me, keeping out of her way. But when she says that, I can tell he wants to know about his father. If maybe he really was a magician. Yeah, Loretta says. Right after you was born. He must be a magician, because as soon as he heard the magic words birth defect, he disappeared. A second later, Iggy shoves us out the door.